Hey everybody, this is Twice Crispy here. Today I'm bringing you five tips on how to solo escape in Dead by Daylight. DBD can be a ton of fun when playing with your friends in a custom match or public lobby, but we've all felt the pain of playing solo queue. Sometimes you get teammates that hide all game, kill themselves on hook, or work with the killer. These tips are going to help you escape more games by combining some good planning and strategizing with a hint of mental manipulation of your teammates. Tip number one, play safe. Know your strengths, weaknesses, and skill limitations. This doesn't mean to hide in a locker all game or completely avoid the killer, but more that you should assess your playstyle and be able to see where your strong points are and play to those advantages. Whether you're a gen jackie, a track star, or uh, whatever the hell this is, there's a playstyle and build to help complement it. Know when to go for risky plays. Here's a camping huntress who really doesn't want us to get this on hook. And here's a random that I'm trying to help make this play. Being able to take aggro, lead the killer away, or swoop in for the unhook will help your team survive longer and raise your personal chances of escaping. You don't have to be the one to go for the unhook if you're not comfortable in your ability to take the hit and keep running. Just being there to pressure the killer might be all it takes to allow someone the time to unhook. Even if you trade hooks, it's way better than letting them phase or even die on hook. Don't be caught out in the open. Always have a plan of where you're going to run next. When you're on a gen, be sure to look around and plan your escape for when the killer comes. This room has two doors and a window. The door to my right has a jungle gym outside, and the door and the window leads to the back of the building, which is a dead zone. Depending on which way the killer enters, I can leave through either the door on my right or the window behind me, but never the door behind me. The reason for that is because if I vault the window early, they have to spend extra time to walk to the door or vault the window slower than I did. If I leave through the door on my right, it's the safer route due to the jungle gym being so close. Don't forget to keep track of which pallets are still up on the map. Running the shack only to find out that someone threw the pallet at 5 gens could lead to you getting downed. Tip number two, know the map. I know this might sound like a no brainer, but each map will have new tile RNG each time you play it. Along with that, certain tiles only appear in specific maps. Most common tiles are the Short Wall Jungle Gym, Long Wall Jungle Gym, Pallet Gym, and LT Wall. Some maps have less common tiles, but I won't get into this since there are a lot of other videos out there that cover this specifically. Just keep in mind that when looping, you'll want to loop in the direction that you can vault the window from as straight on as possible. Use map offerings for where you know you play the best. This might take some time to get to know which maps you play the best on if you're still a new player, but after about 20 hours or so, you should get a feel for which maps you like best. If you're gonna go in solo, it's super beneficial to go to a map that you're comfortable on. A good rule of thumb is to have three maps that you're confident on, so that if you run out of map offerings for one, you can throw in an offering for another that you think you'll do well on. Tip number three, pick perks that favor your playstyle. Don't pick perks just because someone online told you, they're meta as fuck, bro. Pick a perk loadout that's going to allow you to play at your best and have those perks be complimentary to your playstyle. Here I've got the full Mambo loadout, and I think I'm doing pretty darn good with it. Oh my god, why am I so bad at using rework dead hard? I should have just stuck with life. Okay, time to look at some builds. The first build is going to be for some newer players. We'll be running Kindred, which will allow other players to see you on the hook. Bond, which will allow you to see other teammates within a certain range. 
And then the next two, Lightweight and Self-Aware, are going to be for navigating the map. Lightweight will shorten the duration that your scratch marks are visible, while Self-Aware will let you see your own scratch marks. Although this isn't a meta loadout by any means, it's a loadout that's going to help new players feel empowered to do their best in their early games. The next build, which has tons of variants, is a Gen Rush build. We're looking at Prove Thyself, which is going to speed the actions of anyone working on a gen with you. Hyper Focus speeds your repair actions every time you hit a great skill check. Deja Vu shows you three random generators on the map, and if you go work on those gens, it'll give you a 5% speed bonus. And Resilience will give you a speed bonus if you're injured working on a gen. With this build, you'll be a pro Gen Jackie in no time at all. The last build we'll talk about is an altruistic build. Saboteur is a perk that will let you sabotage hooks without the use of a toolbox. But more importantly, it's going to show you all the Scourge hooks in the map. Breakout will speed up the wiggle progress of any survivor that's being carried while you're within a certain distance of the carried survivor. Medal of Man gives you a free endurance after taking two protection hits for a teammate. And we're going to pair all that with Sprint Burst to help you catch up with the killer and reach hooks faster. Now look at you being a real team player out here. Tip number four. Play altruistically from the start. Take a hit for someone early on in the game before they even get downed. That'll make them think about doing the same for you when you're in trouble. Now this isn't going to work 100% of the time, but you don't want to be the one left to die on first hook when the gates are open. Give an item to your teammate who's struggling. Is your yellow medkit really that important when you can't give it to someone who's being tunneled? The longer that person stays alive, the more chance the team has to succeed as a whole. So make an effort to go help people who are the main focus of the killer. Bring perks that benefit the team. I know I just went over a few solid loadouts, but here are some standalone perks that can always be a game changer. In no particular order, we've got Boon, Circle of Healing, Boon, Shadow Step, Reassurance, Borrowed Time, and Leader. Tip 5 Play for the end game. Encourage your team to go back for the person on the hook. Even if one person leaves, you can still make a solid play and help your teammate get out safe. Wave at them to follow you if they don't seem to be understanding what you want. Play slow and take protection hits for the unhooked person once they're rescued. We all know the feeling of being left on hook and watching your team stroll out the gates, so make an effort to go help them out too. Bring endgame perks. Hope, Adrenaline, Guardian, Left Behind, and Wake Up are all fantastic perks to help you survive in the endgame. It definitely sucks to get all the gens done, only to die after all that hard work. Know when to look for hatch or camp and exit gate. This is going to be incredibly situational as it strongly depends on which killer and map you get. Learning the hatch spawns for each map will also greatly help you decide if you want to go look for it or wait by the gate to open it. Tip number five and a half. I know I said I'd be done at 5, and this isn't as much of a tip as it is a mentality to adapt. Go out there and have fun. It can be easy to get tilted in a game like this, especially when some people are set out to make this game as miserable for people as possible. Make friends and do silly stuff. Don't take it overly seriously. I hope these tips help you become a better player and escape more games in solo queue. Okay, I had to come back in and record some more audio because I just played one of the most fun games that I've had in months. Uh, it was three randoms. I'm assuming they were a Swift. Uh, what was so fun about it is I started off the match by blowing up a generator, like, instantly. And the killer was there immediately. We played against a Wesker. Honestly, I don't think Wesker's all that fun or interesting to go up against. He just kind of, like, uh, manhandles teams. Whatever. That's fine. So, I think that 
I mean, we have one person running for the people. We're all taking hits. Uh, we're, we're dead harding. We're using off the record in this guy's face, just getting people hooks. Um, I picked up a flashlight. Somebody else had a flashlight in the trial. I think it was the Ada. Uh, we're blinding. We're stunning. It, it was just, it was so fun. Uh, we knew we were losing. Uh, we did one gen. You know, whatever. That's fine. Uh, I don't think the point of the game is to always uh, have an escape every time. I think sometimes it's fun to just go in. You find a team that's being goofy and uh, just go be goofy with them. If you see a team that's just like doing stupid stuff and screwing around, like, all right, cool. It's probably a wash. Um, they're there to just have fun and you should have fun with them. I had a great time with these these three randoms and I hope you guys can have more games like this too because this was an absolute blast.